so hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 in today's class we'll be talking about the pib news from 15th to 17th of march 2023 and i hope the preparations for the upcoming rba grade B examinations are going well i am again and again saying this thing do please do not lose out your time just give your best all right so let's begin with the class without any delay and let's talk about the very first question which says yeah, which says very, very important question. I will say which of the following statements are incorrect about recently released basic animal has husbandry statistics 2022 and very, very, very important for the NAVAD examination. I believe ki NAVAD may is ka question the rule chahiye, right? So the ministry of fisheries, animal husbandry and dairying has released the basic animal husbandry statistics for the year 2022. Now, what all information has been provided in the in these statistics? So basically, it is giving us the overview of animal husbanders, uh, animal husbandry sector briefly in the terms of important livestock on livestock population, production, and other relevant information like animal diseases, infrastructure, etc. All right. Now remember, it is the primary source of data on production estimates of four of four major livestock products, which are milk, egg meat and wool for the year 21-22 and remember there was a compound annual growth rate of 7.93 percent during 2014-15 to 2021 right in what in the value addition of livestock sector value addition of livestock sector may 2014-15 there was a compound annual growth rate of 7.93 percent this report is saying this and it's this report is also saying that in 2020-2021 the share of livestock at constant prices in agriculture sector and total GVA gross value added it was 30.13 percent and 4.9 percent respectively right which means share of livestock at constant prices in agriculture sector it was 30.13 percent and total GVA it was 4.9 percent right now let's talk about sector wise so first of all talking about milk sector so the total milk production in financial year 22 it was 221.06 million tons which, uh, which is actually an increase of 5.29%. And these are the top five milk producing states with number one, uh, this time is Rajasthan. Generally, jo number one hota hai, that is UP, but this time it is Rajasthan, right? And you can see there is not much difference between Rajasthan's percentage and UP's percentage. So Rajasthan, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh are the top five milk producing states. And per capita availability of milk in the nation is 444 gram per day. And it has also been increased by 17 gram per day. If we compare it with the previous year's data. All right. Talking about <clears throat> egg sector. So the total egg production is 129.60 billion numbers, right? Numbers matlab 129.60 billion ande jo hai wo produce hoi hai, which is again an increase by 6.9%. And these are the top five egg producing states you don't have to remember these percentages not at all required and yes top state he to that would be enough so the top five uh, major egg producing states are Andhra Pradesh Tamil Nadu Telangana West Bengal and Karnataka and the per capita availability of of egg in the nation is 95 numbers per annum because ki availability hai hamare desh mein jo bhi ande khate hai, right and which is also an increase by five numbers per annum over the previous year, right? Now talking about the meat sector. So the total meat production is 9.29 million ton increase of 5.62%. Top five meat producing states are Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And per capita availability of meat is 6.82 kg per annum per annum during 21-22 and which is also an increase of 0 0.30 kg per annum. All right. And finally, talking about the wool sector, so the total wool production in financial year 22, it was 33.13 thousand tons, which is decline, which which is which has shown a decline of 10.30 percent. So out of all the four sectors, there is only one sector which has shown a decline of uh, which has which has shown a decline in production, that is wool sector. And how much percent? 10.30 percent. And these are the top five producing. Uh, wool producing states which are Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir, Gujarat, Maharashtra and Himachal Pradesh. All right. So that is all guys this about this uh, basic animal husbandry statistics and now let's identify the incorrect statement. It has been released by Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. No, 
it has been released by ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying so the statement is incorrect the share of livestock at constant prices in agriculture sector and total gva was 30.13 and 4.9 ye sahi i think Total milk production is three hundred point zero six million tons. I think it's not three hundred point zero six million tons. It is around two hundred something. If I am not wrong, yes, two twenty one point zero six. Total egg production is one twenty nine point six zero billion numbers. Yeah, ठीक है. Total bull production is thirty three point one three thousand tons. Yeah, भी ठीक है. So one and three are incorrect, which means option B. Option B is the correct answer. And now let's talk about question number two. Where is Indian Coast Guard Region Northeast conducting the fourth edition of table top exercise under the aegis of Colombo Security Conclave? Right. So let's talk about it, and then we will come back to the question. So remember, the Indian Coast Guard Region in the Northeast is conducting the fourth edition of table top exercise under the aegis of Colombo Security Conclave in Kolkata in West Bengal because it is the northeastern regions, not Indian Coast Guards, right? कोलकाता वेस्ट बंगाल में ये हो रहा है एंड इट वाज द फोर्थ एडिशन द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस टेबल टॉप एक्सरसाइज वाज टू डिस्कस टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू चैलेंजेस इन द मैरीटाइम सिक्योरिटी यू नो लाइक टैकलिंग थ्रेट्स फ्रॉम एंटी नेशनल एलिमेंट्स मरीन पोल्यूशन रिस्पांस सर्च एंड सिक्योर एंड डैमेज कंट्रोल इज एक्सी राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया द पार्टिसिपेंट्स इंक्लूडेड मेंबर्स ऑफ कोलंबो सिक्योरिटी कॉन्क्लेव विच आर श्रीलंका मालदीव एंड मॉरिशियस एंड आल्सो the observers of this conclave which are bangladesh and seychelles right now talking more about this conclave so remember this conclave colombo security conclave was established in the year 2011 to make maritime security malu, uh, marine pollution response and maritime search and rescue priorities for the region right it was initially formed as a trilateral maritime security group of india sri lanka and maldives but later it was joined by mauritius also so if anyone ask you how many members are there so four members are there and fourth one was mauritius but bangladesh and seychelles are also the observer right they are the observer bangladesh and uh, seychelles it underlines regional cooperation and shared security objectives concerning all littoral nations in the indian ocean region all right so that is all and where did it take place so in kolkata option b is the correct answer Let's talk about question number three. Then, which ministry has released the twenty-fourth issue of publication titled "Women and Men in India 2020-22"? Now, you don't have to don't go into the details of this issue. Just remember, it has been released by Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, headed by Rao Indrajit Singh. Rao Indrajit Singh is the minister, and his Lok Sabha constituency is Guru Gram in Haryana. Now, what is this basically? What is this publication? What this publication is telling us? so remember it is providing us all the data on a wide range of topics like education health employment and political participation concerning women and men in the nation it presents data disaggregated by gender urban rural divide and geographical region which helps us to understand any kind of disparity which currently exist between different groups of men and women all right so that's all isse zyada isme aapko detail mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai and hence the correct answer is option a mospi which is ministry of statistics and program implementation question number 4 pe chalte hain ministry of road transport and highways and world bank have signed an agreement for the construction of green highways national corridor project now again it is not a new project it is the news because the reply has been submitted by uh, the ministry in the parliament right so under it total 781 km aggregate length Uh, will be built which of the following states are covered under this project remember this project is a collaboration between the ministry of road transport and highways and world bank dono ka collaboration hai isme and this object this this project is being constructed in order to demonstrate safe and green highway keeping in view the climate resilience and use of green technologies so the ministry of road transport and highways in collaboration with world bank making the highways green with the use of green technology The total aggregate length of this project is 781 km and it will pass from Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh, right? So this project will be covering the four states: Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Rajasthan, right? The total project cost is 1288.24 million dollars in rupees it is 7662.47 crores out of which the World Bank assistance is 500 million dollars, right? Under the project 
the ministry is incorporating the green technologies in road construction and also it is focusing on the conservation of natural resources all right so from which of the following states are covered so these are himachal pradesh north uttarakhand rajasthan north maharashtra uttar pradesh and fourth is andhra pradesh so 1 3 and 5 should be the correct answer option d all right and now let's talk about question number 5 so there is an mou signed between power foundation and climate policy india limited uh, to work together to support india's transition towards a cleaner energy future power foundation is a think tank and a policy and research advocacy body under which ministry the question is very easy it is a, a think tank of ministry of power headed by rk singh but remember this mou this mou has been signed between power foundation and cpi which is climate policy initiative india private limited and both these will work together to support india's transition towards a clean energy future right they these organizations will work together to promote distributed renewable energy capacity building supporting india's energy transition and managing transition related risks all right so in 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 such kind of mous you just have to remember the organization or the countries between which the mou has been signed and the objective of the mou that is more than enough and that's why the correct answer is what guys option d ministry of power and let's talk about question number 6 Name the comprehensive self-monitoring framework launched by Niti Aayog to strengthen the ever-growing ecosystem of Atal Tinkering Lab. So, to strengthen the ecosystem of Atal Tinkering Labs, the Niti Aayog has launched a self-monitoring framework through through which the Atal Tinkering Labs will be self-monitored, right? And this will strengthen them. And the name is ATL Sarthi, right? What is the name ATL Sarthi, which is which has four pillars. Number one is my ATL dashboard, which is a self-reporting dashboard. right compliance sops for schools which will ensure financial and non financial compliances then we have a cluster based approach for on ground enablement of atal tinkering labs in collaboration with relevant local authorities and performance enablement matrix is also there to provide ownership to schools so that they can analyze they can self analyze their own performance all right so what is the name what is the name that's atl sarthi option e is the correct answer and now let's talk about guys the questions in short but before that if you want to have the pdf you can join the telegram channel the link is in description and if you want to ask anything related to examination you can follow me here let's talk about question number 7 then where has the cultural program agri unifest been organized in collaboration with icar so this cultural program agri unifest has been organized in collaboration with icar in bangalore option c is the correct answer question number 8 20 questions are there guys so thoda sa dhairya banaye rakhe to achieve uniform uh, nutritional impact among the targeted population central government has approved supply of fortified rice through tpds under nfsa and in other welfare system of the government of india in all states or uts by which year in a phased manner right so it will be completed it will be achieved by march 2024 option b is the correct answer and there are three phases of this in phase 1 icds and pm poshan will be covered in all over india by march 2022 phase 2 phase 1 plus tpds and other welfare schemes in all aspirational and high burden districts on stunting by the end of march 2023 and in phase 3 phase 2 plus Uh, remaining districts of the country by the end of march 2023 right so these are the three phases but the entire uh, you know the entire initiative will be completed by march 2024 and that's why the correct answer is option b question number 9 a centrally sponsored project for computerization of pacs large area uh, multi purpose cooperative societies farmer services societies across the countries under implementation This project entails bringing all the functional PACS on ERP, which is Enterprise Resource Planning, based common software, linking them with the bar. जो इतनी सारी बातें होती हैं ना, वो केवल आपका time waste करने के लिए होती है. The question is, what is the total financial outlay of this project, which we have discussed a lot of times, very recently, because in the last session, when there was last session of Parliament, uh, uh, not even one month back, ये हमने discuss किया है detail में, that's why I have not taken this news in detail, right? The total outlay of this project is two five one six crores, and option B is the correct answer. 
where has the ministry of youth affairs and sports organized summit of ministers of physical education and sports of sco nations under india's sco presidency which will be continued till september 2023 right so uh, when we are talking about physical education and sports it was the, it, it must be organized by ministry of youth affairs and sports headed by anurag singh thakur and it was organized in new delhi so option a is the correct answer which of the following services of imd have been launched with umang mobile app for the use by public remember in the year 2020 these seven services were made public by imd on umang mobile app right which are current weather nowcast city forecast rainfall information tourism forecast warnings and cyclone right so all the four are the information of uh, given by you know not information services given by imd on umang mobile app and that's why the correct answer is option e all of the above ministry of education has launched national initiative for proficiency in reading with understanding and numeracy in nipun bharat in 2021 for ensuring that every girl child sorry every child in the country necessarily attains foundational literacy and numeracy by the end of grade 3 by which year which means the target under this scheme will be achieved by which year so that's financial year 27 and that's why the correct answer is option d again i have not taken the scheme in detail because don't worry all these schemes will be discussed uh, in detail when we will con- will be conducting the government schemes revision session once the notification is out so you guys don't have to worry at all when i am here question number 13 where has the business women expo 2023 india's largest platform for business women and entrepreneurs to connect collaborate and celebrate with corporate enterprises and trade been organized so the business women expo 2023 has been organized in hyderabad option b is the correct answer question number 14 important question national rail plan announced by the ministry of railways and by such is that the share of free traffic by rail should go up from current share of 28% to 44% by which year कब तक हो जाएगा ये अट्ठाईस परसेंट से चवालीस परसेंट सो इट विल बी इट विल गो अप फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट टू फोर्टी फोर परसेंट बाई दू थाउजेंड फिफ्टी वन सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज लॉन्च लर्निंग साइंस बाई स्टैंडर्ड तो इसके आगे मैं पढ़ूंगा ही नहीं मैं यहीं पर आंसर मार्क कर दूंगा बट यस करेंटली वी हैव डिस्कसिंग वी आर डिस्कसिंग सो वट इज दिस लर्निंग साइंस बाय स्टैंडर्ड सो बेसिकली इट इज एम to use scientific concepts principles and laws to help students in understanding their practical applications in manufacturing and testing of quality characteristics of different products right so when we are talking about standards so it must be bis without any doubt option b is the correct answer question number 16 which is the hosting ministry of 16th meeting of sco youth council held in hybrid mode in new delhi under the chairship of india of course again when we are talking about youth the answer must be ministry of youth affairs and sports and this was the theme effective community development activities all right question number 17 where has the conference dawn of a plant based age during the ahar exhibition been organized by the plant based food industry association to deliberate on plant based foods as an option for food security in the future now remember this ahar exhibition is being conducted in pragati maidan which i believe you all must have heard it is in new delhi and that's why the correct answer is option e where has the ministry of commerce and industries organizing has or where okay yes where ministry of commerce and industries organizing the third b20 conference of northeast india under india's g20 presidency <coughs> so the third edition of business 20 was organized in gangtok option a is the correct answer Question number nineteen, very important. The unit of for connectivity under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana implemented by Ministry of Rural Development is what? So under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, how we are measuring that? Uh, you know the road, जो सड़क है वो गांव तक पहुंच गई है तो हम कैसे measure कर रहे हैं उसके लिए unit क्या है? So that unit is habitation. In those villages where the government is targeting to construct the roads, the habitation should be there. All right. so the unit for connectivity under pm gsy is habitation right and the last question for today again very important question since inception of pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana in 2016 17 coverage under it has been around how much percent of gross crop area in the states or ut which are implementing the scheme so bahut zyada nahi hua hai but yes 
धीरे धीरे ही हम आगे बढ़ेंगे दैट थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल ग्रॉस क्रॉप एरिया सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर All right, guys. So that's all for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in the next session on Wednesday. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.